Hello to you all CFT learners. In this course, we'll go through the most comprehensive model to simulate multiphase flows, namely the Eulerian model. We will first investigate the existing physics and mention some of the applications of this powerful model. Then I'll explain different options and submodels of the Eulerian model and mention some tips and tricks on how to use this model. In the next sessions of this course, I will demonstrate how you can use this model to simulate different problems through some examples. The topics that we will discuss in this chapter are the Eulerian model applications and its range of applicability. Next, we will discuss the regime transition modeling, which are AIAD and GenTOP submodels. In the next part, we'll discuss uh, different boiling models that are available under the Eulerian model. And next, we will go through interfacial area concentration and algebraic interfacial area models and their differences. In the next part, we will discuss different forces that are, are applicable using the Eulerian model. And of course, in the next part, we will uh, talk about turbulent interactions and different models that are available. And finally, we will uh, talk about the Eulerian granular model and uh, how to use this model to simulate different real problems using Access Flow and software. And ultimately, we'll give you a summary on the topics that we've mentioned in this chapter. Eulerian model is the strongest model for simulating multiphase flows and has the largest applicability range. This model can simulate various types of flows covering different types of flow regimes such as bubbly, droplet, slurry, and so many other regimes. This model can resolve different volume and particulate loadings and is capable of modeling flows with any Reynolds number. Some of the conventional flow types that can be simulated using this model are gas-liquid or liquid-liquid flows, gas-solid flows, and liquid-solid flows. So as you can see, Eulerian model can be used to model any type of multiphase flow. Now what we're going to do here is that we have the Eulerian model, which is the most complex of the multiphase model in ANSYS Fluent. It solves a set of end momentum and continuity equations for each phase. In the Eulerian approach, both the dispersed particles phase and the continuous fluid phase are solved using the Navier-Stokes equation. Coupling is achieved through the pressure and interphase exchange of coefficients. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Eulerian model is the most comprehensive model that can be used to perform many simulation and can almost cover any type of model or multiphase flow that you are dealing with. The applications of the Eulerian model include bubble columns, riser, particle suspension, fluidized beds. These are of course only a few of applications of the Eulerian model. It also should be mentioned that this model can be used to compute any multiphase flow regime as I mentioned, provided that an adequate closure relation for the interfacial coupling terms are provided. Now what we're going to do next is to explain different submodels available when you enable the Eulerian model. We are going to explain regime transition modeling using algebraic interfacial area density or AIAD for short and generalized two-phase flow or GenTOP for short. Next, we will talk about Eulerian parameters namely boiling model and multifluid VOF model. We will not cover dense discrete phase model in this course and you may obtain more info about this option in another Mr. CFT's course with the name of DPM training course. Also, regarding the volume fraction parameters, you can learn more about it in the VOF concept session. Higher turbulent gas liquid bubbly flows are encountered in many industrial applications, including petrochemical, pharmaceutical, biochemical, nuclear, and metallurgical industries. One common example of such flows uh, is annular two phase flow that occurs in boilers, heat exchanger, natural gas fields, and so on. In the annular flow pattern, gas flows at high velocity through the core of the pipe and the liquid film flows at lower velocity around the pipe wall. The high gas velocity results in large shear velocities which, in turn, lead to high interfacial shear stresses. The liquid film interface becomes unstable and the droplets are torn from the interface and entrained in the gas core. Droplet entrainment changes flow characteristics. Different factors affect the entrained liquid fraction and the circumferential distribution of liquid film thickness on the wall. Gravity causes the liquid film drainage. Evaporation can also deplete the liquid wall film resulting in dry patches near the top of the pipe. These effects become more significant with increasing gas velocity and can result in equipment damage. The traditional multiphase approaches to solving such problems do not predict the correct transitional flow behavior and mechanics behind droplet entrainment. 
In such regimes, the liquid droplet entrainment has a significant impact on the mechanisms for mass, momentum and energy transfer. Hydrodynamics and surface forces can cause significant deformation of the liquid film interface resulting in the breakage of continuous film surface into smaller dispersed droplets. The deformation depends on the flow pattern and the interface shape. The algebraic interfacial area density or AIAD for short approach offers the universal droplet entrainment model that covers all of the entrainment patterns and predicts the rate of entrainment. Liquid droplets can be entrained into gas flow in the following patterns. Tearing off the tops of the crests of large amplitude roll waves by the turbulent gas flow, undercutting the liquid film by the gas flow, or bursting of gas bubbles, or even impinging of wave or droplets onto the film interface. When you enable the AIAD model, some submodels will be enabled automatically such as multi-fluid VOF model, sharp or dispersed interface modeling, and phase localized discretization. You can obtain more info regarding the latter terms uh, in the VOF concept session. Now, the multi-fluid VOF model provides a framework to couple the VOF and Eulerian multiphase models by enabling a schemes such as georeconstruct, CICSAM, and compressive. This allows the use of discretization scheme and options suited to both sharp and dispersed interface regimes while overcoming some limitations of the VOF model that arise due to the shared velocity and temperature formulation. When using the AIAD option, you need to pay attention to phases definition and the specific materials you select for each of the primary and secondary phases. For example, if you want to model droplet entrainment, you need to define gas as a primary phase, liquid as a secondary continuous phase, and droplets as a secondary entrained phase. Or in case, if you want to model bubble entrainment, the same procedure can be used. But what you need to pay attention in the bubble entrainment model is to define liquid as a primary continuous phase, gas as a secondary continuous phase, and bubbles as a secondary entrained phase. Also pay attention to the fact that the AIAD model implementation requires both secondary phases to be of the same material. In the next step, you need to head for the forces tab. There, you need to set the interfacial forces between the phase pairs. Note the following when using the AIAD model. For the pair of primary and AIAD secondary continuous phases, you can define only the drag and surface tension coefficients. The pair of the primary and secondary entrained phases has no restrictions in terms of setting interfacial forces. The two phases of the same material, meaning the AIAD continuous and entrained phases, interact via entrainment and deposition. No forces should be defined for such phase pairs. Once the AIAD model is applied, ANSYS Fluent automatically selects the following options. 1. Surface Tension Force Modeling and Continuum Surface Stress under the Global Options group box would become activated. Although the Surface Tension Force Modeling option cannot be overridden, you can select a Surface Tension and Adhesion method suitable for your simulation. After that, you can click on Edit button uh, next to the coefficients of different forces available here and adjust the values of the AIAD model parameters in the AIAD model parameters dialog box. The detailed explanation of the force setup including different forces that are available will be provided in next slides. Numerical simulation of multiphase flows in industrial processes require the understanding of many different flow regimes. The scales of interest range from homogeneous dispersed bubble columns in chemical engineering applications to strictly separated gas structure during the fluid transport in long pipelines. For the modeling of such large systems, the Euler Euler method has turned out to be the most efficient approach enabling the use of coarse computational grids. A large number of closure models has been developed to describe specific flow regimes. However, in many practical flow applications, separated and polydispersed flow regimes occur simultaneously and show strong interactions. One of the most critical weaknesses of the older older approach for gas liquid flows is the limited validity range of the closure laws such as drag, lift, volume percussion, turbulent dispersion and turbulence interaction. The fluid particle size range of the closure relation is highly restricted by experimental data on one hand and the computational complexity 
of DNS simulation on the other hand. Interfacial closures for large gaseous particles such as churn-like or Taylor bubbles are not easy to obtain due to instability of the interface of the large bubbles rising without interference from the small bubbles. Conventional Eulerian approaches cannot be used for predictions of transitional flows in industrial applications where separated and dispersed flow structures appear simultaneously. The Gentop method is a multi-field, two-fluid approach where the flow is represented by a continuous primary phase, one or several polydispersed secondary phases, and a Gentop phase. The Gentop concept combines the AI-AD model with inhomogeneous multiple size group, or for short, IMUSIG model, by adding a continuous gas phase resolving its gas-liquid interface within the computational grid. By including appropriate models, mass transfer between polydispersed and continuous gas phase are possible, including the appearance and advancements of particular phase. One of the most useful and comprehensive submodels under the Eulerian model is the boiling model. Using this model, the user is enabled to model different boiling regimes. Boiling takes different forms depending on the value of the wall superheat temperature or, or delta T sat, also known as the excess temperature defined as a difference between the wall temperature or T wall and the saturation temperature or T sat. Different boiling regimes include natural convection boiling, nucleate boiling, transition boiling and film boiling. You may also view the heat flux in each boiling regime based on the excess wall temperature in the shown plot. What happens in a boiling process is that the heat from a solid is transferred to the nearby fluid causing the fluid's temperature to reach its saturation point. Basically, the term boiling is used to describe the physical situation where the temp wall temperature is high enough to cause boiling to occur at the heating wall. In such cases, the energy is transferred directly from the wall to the liquid. Part of this energy will cause the temperature of the liquid to increase and uh, the other part will generate vapor. Interface heat transfer will also cause the average liquid temperature to increase. However, the saturated vapor will condense. Additionally, some of the energy may be transferred directly from the wall to the vapor. The basic mechanisms are the foundations of the so-called Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute models. Different types of boiling models should be used to simulate various boiling regimes. This can be done through different models available under the Eulerian multiphase section, such as RPI boiling model, non-equilibrium boiling, and critical heat flux models. Use RPI model to simulate nucleate boiling up to the onset of departure from nucleate boiling, or DNB for short, or critical heat flux point, or CHF for short. In this model, the total heat flux from the wall to the liquid is partitioned into three components, namely the convective heat flux, the quenching heat flux, and the evaporative heat flux. Regarding the non-equilibrium model, this model is a modification to RBI model in order to model different boiling regimes like DNB and critical heat flux. And the third model, which is a critical heat flux, it is a condition uh, which is characterized by a sharp reduction of local heat transfer coefficients and the excursion of wall surface temperature. This phenomenon occurs when heated surfaces are no longer vetted by boiling liquid with the increase of vapor content. At critical heat flux conditions, vapor replaces the liquid and occupies the space adjacent to the heated walls. The energy is therefore directly transferred from the wall to the vapor. In turn, it, it results in rapid reduction of heat removal ability and sharp rise of the vapor temperature, and most importantly, the wall temperatures. In the Eulerian model, user can select between two models of algebraic model and transport-based interfacial area concentration or IAC for short, to model the interface between phases. These models will account for mass, momentum, and energy transfer through the interface between the phases. Interfacial area concentration is defined as the interfacial area between two phases per unit mixture volume. This is an important parameter for predicting mass, momentum, and energy transfer through the interface between phases. A transport equation is used for estimation of interfacial area concentration. This allows for a distribution of bubble diameters and coalescence uh, or breakage effects, which would be enabled as the user enabled this option under the phases tab. 
If you have chosen not to solve the transport equation for interfacial area concentration, you can select an algebraic model to estimate the interfacial area from the secondary phase diameter specified in the interfacial area tab of the multiphase model dialog box. The options that are available under the interfacial area combo drop-down list are symmetric, particle and gradient for example. Uh, by using the symmetric model, uh, it actually considers both the primary and secondary phase volume fractions in estimating the interfacial area. By using the particle model, it only considers the secondary phase's volume fraction in estimating the interfacial area. And of course, when using the gradient option, uh, the software will consider the volume fraction gradient at the interface between two phases in estimating the interfacial area. It should be noted, however, that additional options are available if you have enabled one of the boiling models. Consider gas bubbles rising through a liquid such as you might see in a bubble column or a glass of soda. The bubbles rise through the liquid. This difference in velocities causes interfacial drag or transfer of momentum between the phases and is a crucial term in modeling two-phase flows. There are different models in Fluent to calculate the drag force between phases which include but not limited to Schiller and Neumann, Morsi and Alexander, and Symmetric. In this and the future slide we'll talk about different forces that are available and applicable when simulating a multiphase flow. Some of the mostly employed models are introduced and their formula are explained. For example, here you can see three different models to calculate interfacial drag. The first model is the Schiller and Neumann, which its correlation is shown for two different Reynolds range. The next model is Morsi and Alexander. Interesting thing about the proposed correlation is that when the Reynolds number is less than unity, it reduces to a Stokes drag law. The next one is a symmetric drag model. The density and the viscosities are calculated from volume averaged properties and CV is given by Schiller and Neumann model. It only should be mentioned that these are only some of the available models, models to, drag, uh, to calculate drag force. There are of course other, other models available which you can obtain more information about on ANSYS Fluence online help webpage. The next important force is the lift force. The lift force is caused by three processes mainly. The first process would be the shear of fluid or in other terms uh, the Safman force. Uh, this force is caused by non-uniform pressure distribution resulting from unbalanced slip velocities. The next process is the rotation or in other terms the Magnus force. This force is caused by forced rotation of the bubbles, droplets or particles in a uniform flow field. Uh, the rotation may be caused by collision with a wall, interparticle collisions or simply because of the shear of fluid. The last process is the vague phenomena which is causing the vertical force. This force is caused by vortex shedding. When a vortex is shed, a transient lateral force is applied on the body which will cause it to rise away from the surface. The first model that we'll introduce here to calculate the lift force is the safman may model and it is used to calculate the lift force for rigid bubbles. This force is a generalization of the safman model to extend the applicability to higher Reynolds numbers. This model is applicable mainly to the lift force on the spherical rigid particles, though it could be applied to liquid droplets that are not significantly distorted. The next model would be the Moraga et al. model, and it is again can be used to calculate the lift force of rigid bubbles. The model includes the effects of both shear and the vorticity induced lift forces. This model is applicable to the lift force of small diameter spherical bubbles and liquid droplets. The next model to calculate the lift force would be the Legendre and Magnotted model and it is again used to calculate the lift force for rigid bubbles. This model includes the effects of both shear and, vor and the vorticity induced lift force just like the previous model and it is capable to calculate the lift force of a small diameter spherical bubbles and liquid droplets. The last model that we'll investigate here to calculate the lift force is the Tomiyama model and it is used to calculate the lift force of distorted fluid particles. This model accounts for larger scale deformable of bubbles in the ellipsoidal and spherical cap regimes. The main important feature is the prediction of crossover point in bubble size at which particle distortion causes a reversal of the sign of the lift force to take place. 
The next important force is the wall lubrication force. In fact, what this force does is that it will correct the behavior of bubbles near the wall boundaries. But what happens in real is that the surface tension prevents bubbles from approaching solid wall very closely. Therefore, as mentioned, uh, if this option is effective near uh, the wall area and causes the mixture flow to have low gas volume fraction there by pushing the bubbles away from the wall. Here, the use correlation is shown where the CL is the wall lubrication coefficient and NW is the unit outward normal distance from the wall and P and Q subcripts denote to gas and liquid phases respectively. So as you saw in the previous slide, the parameter CWL is the parameter that plays a prominent role in the value of wall lubrication force and different studies have focused on calculating the correct value or correlation for this parameter with the aim of obtaining the wall lubrication force accurately. The first model uh, is the Antal et al. model which its correlation for calculating the CWL is shown. It only should be mentioned that this model is only active in regions where the distance to the nearest wall or VW is less than or equal to 5 times the diameter of the bubble. The next model is the Tomiyama model. Like Tomiyama lift force and drag models, it depends on Etowas number. Hence, it accounts for dependence of wall lubrication force on bubble shape. Now for those of you who are not familiar with the Etowas number, it is a non-dimensionalized number which measures the buoyancy force compared to surface tension force. Interesting thing is that when the Tomiyama model is used for both lift force and wall lubrication force, excellent results are obtained for bubble flow in vertical pipes. However, uh, it requires pipe diameter as an input parameter, hence, hence it is geometry dependent. The next two models that are used to calculate the constant values of CWL for wall lubrication force are Frank et al. model and Hosokawa model. In the Frank et al. model, uh, it is actually uh, a general form of Tomiyama model so that it would be geometry independent. And uh, the model constant used in this model are calibrated and validated for bubbly flow in vertical pipes. The next model would be the Hosokawa model. Uh, based on the measurements done by the Hosokawa et al., the coefficient of CWL in Tomiyama and Frank models not only depends on Etowas number, but also on the bubble relative Reynolds number. Therefore, he proposed a correlation, which you can see here, that integrates the effects of both Etowas number and Reynolds number. The next force that we will cover here would be the turbulent dispersion force. The turbulent dispersion force accounts for an interaction between turbulent eddies and the particles. It acts as a turbulent dispersion which play the crucial role to homogenize the dispersed phase distribution in the continuum phase. This force is a pseudo force which induces a diffusive flux that accounts for dispersion or spread of dispersed phase entities due to the random influence of the turbulent eddies present in the continuous phase. The next force listed here is the virtual mass force. The virtual mass force represents the force due to inertia of the dispersed phase when the dispersed phase is accelerated. The virtual mass force is proportional to relative acceleration of phases and the constant value which is needed to be defined and is given by CVM equal to be equal to 0.5. This force is potentially significant for the cases where we have large continuous dispersed phase density ratios, for example, bubbly flows, transient flows that can affect period of oscillating bubble plume, and strongly accelerating flows, for example, bubbly flow through narrow constrictions. The presence of dispersed particles in turbulent flows has an effect on the intensity and the spatial and temporal characteristics of the primary phase turbulence. This phenomenon is called turbulence modulation or turbulence interaction. Turbulence interaction in a dispersed two-phase mixture may occur because of the contribution of any of the following mechanisms. For example, vortex breaking and dissipation of turbulence kinetic energy on the surface of particles, dissipation of turbulent kinetic energy on acceleration and deceleration of the elements of the dispersed phase, uh, and wakes and shedding of vortices behind the particles and enhancement of the fluid velocity gradient between two neighboring particles and of course deformation and vibration of the surface uh, of the immersed objects 
and for the last one uh, modification of the effective viscosity of the fluid these are the factors that may affect the turbulence interaction the majority of multiphase flows are turbulent. Turbulence in primary phase can be modeled by single phase turbulence models such as K epsilon, K omega, Reynolds stress model, and so on. Three variants of single phase turbulence models with Eulerian multiphase are mixture, dispersed, and per phase. In the mixture model, uh, it actually assumes that all phases flow like a single fluid or, or mixture, and turbulence is shared. It also should be mentioned that mixture model is not appropriate to model bubble plumes. In the dispersed model, it assumes that the inter-particle collisions are negligible and dominant influence is the primary phase turbulence. The dispersed model is appropriate model when secondary phases are dilute. And of course, the last one which is the per phase, it is the most comprehensive model and more computationally intensive. This model is appropriate choice, choice when turbulent transfer among the phases plays a dominant role. The next type of multiphase flows are granular flows. They are considered as one of the most important mixture flows which can be simulated using Eulerian model. But before jumping into the available settings, let's first introduce granular materials. The granular materials are a collection of discrete solid particles with a variety of sizes, distribution and shapes. There are different examples, for example, regarding the natural examples, we have dunes, avalanches, and the soil itself, and regarding the industrial applications, we have coffees, cereals, cement, and pharmaceuticals. One of the first thing you should know about granular model, which is based on kinetic theory, is that it cannot model solid mechanics. However, it can model packed beds and transition between fluidized and packed beds. If you want to know more about your granular flows and their dynamics, you can refer to kinetic theory of granular flows in Fluent Help page. Now, when it comes to modeling granular flows, one of the influencing factors is the granular temperature. Many parameters needed to model granular flows are dependent to GT or granular temperature, such as shear viscosities. GT is a measure of kinetic energy contained in the fluctuating velocity of particles. It is obtained by solving the transport equations related to that parameter. Regarding the transport equation, you have two options available here, the algebraic form and partial differential equation. In the algebraic form, the terms related to convection and diffusion are neglected, while in the partial differential equation format, the full equation of transport is solved. Other parameters needed to model granular flows are introduced in this and in the next slides. The first parameter that we'll start with is the solid pressure. It is the pressure exerted on the containing wall due to the presence of particles, and it measures the momentum transfer due to streaming motion of particles and collision. The next parameter would be the radial distribution function. The radial distribution function is a correction factor that modifies the probability of collision close to packing. And of course, the next parameter would be the granular viscosities, where we can see that we have two related options with the names of granular viscosity itself and granular bulk viscosity. The shear viscosity due to kinetic motion and collisional interaction of particles is in fact the granular viscosity itself. The bulk viscosity accounts for particle resistance to expansion and compression, and by default its value is set to zero. The next parameter would be the frictional stress modeling. Frictional stresses are negligible below a certain solid volume fraction, but they become important as the solid volume fraction approaches the packing limit. The packing limit is defined as the maximum achievable volume fraction of the granular phase, and uh, for packed sphere, its value would be e almost equal to 0.63. However, regarding the frictional stress modeling itself, I should mention that particles do not collide much, but rather rub against each other. The frictional stresses are negligible below a certain solid volume fraction, as I mentioned earlier, but they become important as the solid volume fraction approaches the packing limit. Alright, so far we have discussed about different concepts and sub-models under the Eulerian multiphase model. 
In summary, Euler model is a powerful tool to model dispersed flows. Accuracy is determined by accuracy of interfacial terms. And of course, the interfacial terms are usually nonlinear, so convergence is often a difficult and a problem when using the Eulerian model. In order to overcome that problem, you can try solving the case using the unsteady solver, or you can use the coupled solver for a steady state. Alright, in this chapter we covered the Eulerian multiphase flow model and its submodels. In the next session we will bring you some examples on how you can use this Eulerian model to simulate different flow problems. To benefit from Mr. CFD services including simulation, consultation and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com or visit our website www.mrcfd.com.